We all remember some great Mattel toys, but there's some Mattel toys that you probably forgot about, so let's take a look at some of them. Welcome back to the Junk Room, everybody. It's me, the Junk Man, coming back at you with another video. That's right, two videos a day, noon and eight, Monday through Friday, weekends are random. So, let's just get on to this. I'm not going to waste your time. We're going to look at 10 forgotten toys from Mattel. We're going to stick mostly to the 70s and 80s, but there might be a few 90s in here also. Mattel's made a lot of great lines. He-Man comes to my mind first, and I'm sure you can think of something else also. But, they've done some other good toy lines that kind of just got overlooked. And then they've done some bad ones too. They're going to be included on this list also. So... I'm not going to waste your time. Like I said, we're going to start right here with number 10. I got a bad case of the worms. Well, it's just called bad case of the worms. This is with a case, and inside was two worms. I don't know exactly what this did. I've looked at the box. It's like two rubber worms. I don't know. That only did... makes no sense. But I like the name of it. A bad case of the worms. I do like the name of that. Bad case of the worms. So let's see right here. How about number nine? Do you remember when Mattel did Archie action figures or dolls? I guess anything with this size, I say doll. They don't even, the Archie and Jughead look pretty good. I think they just kind of went generic with the Veronica and, uh, I don't know, Veronica and Betty. Betty and Veronica, yeah, I gotta forget that. And there's no Mr. Weatherby. There's no Mr. Weatherby. But there was a pretty kick-ass jalopy. And yeah, that's the junkyard dog you see. He cleans up all the glass for me. Um, number eight, Flash Gordon. Now, this ends up based on the movie. This came out with them trying to capitalize on the Star Wars Kenner cells, and they came up with Flash Gordon. After all, George Lucas wanted to do Flash Gordon, and he couldn't, so he did Star Wars. Think the maker. And Mattel did Flash Gordon. I like the lizard-looking guy. The rest of them, they look okay for the time period. They're they're good figures, but they didn't sell they didn't sell that well. They did okay. I mean, they did like three series of them, but they didn't. You know, they wasn't Star Wars. What I should say, they wasn't Star Wars. That's for sure. Okay, here's the next one right here. This one, this one you're gonna get batty for. That is Gary Gar Gargory Gargory. I'm not sure how to say this. Bat. It's just a bat. It's just a toy line of a bat. Nothing else to go with it. You can see his innards. That's right. You can see the bat's innards. If you live in the south like I do, you can usually see the bat innards. You know, on the side of the road. But no, no, no. If you're from the city, you might want to see some bat innards. Who you buy? This Gary Oreo, whatever his name is. I can't even say, I can't say it. Here's the ones from the 90s. Remember the movie with Emilio Estevez? <laughs> Mighty Ducks. I remember it. You remember it. Everybody remembers it. Did you know the toy line? Well, the toy line is based on the cartoon. And it's not from the movie. There's no Emilio Estevez action figure. These are ducks that play hockey. They're Mighty Ducks. Crazy. Remember this toy line? I'm sure some of you just might. You just might. Okay, so we got Mighty Ducks out of the way. Here's one I would have got as a kid. I would have got this as a kid because it looked like something from Space Giants. Oh, Rodan. Remember Rodan? I think he showed up in Godzilla, God, Godzilla sometime. Rodan, the world's greatest monster. Mattel made a Rodan. Just a Rodan figure. That's no more in this line. Looks pretty dang awesome. And I wish I knew that one as a kid. Oh, that one looks really cool. That one looks really cool right here. Oh. I don't know about this one. This one probably didn't sell. This looks like, I guess they was trying to, when Mattel does Barbie does. I don't know what they're trying to do with this line. It looks, oh my God, I dropped my card. It looked horrible. Michael and Michelle, Young Sweethearts. It just looks generic. It looks like something you see a family dollar or something. I don't I don't know what Mattel was thinking with this one. I mean, this was late 70s. It wasn't like this was when they were just starting out. Could do without this one right here. It even comes with this thing for them. But that was the only thing on that line, two different things. At least it came in a two-pack. They didn't make you buy Michael and Michelle separately. So that's kind of cool, Mattel. I will give you that one. Okay, now we're at, remember one of the 80s B, the biggest B movie the 80s had to be Killer Tomatoes, Attack of the Killer Tomatoes. I think they even did Killer Tomatoes, Attack Again or something. But they did an action figure. This is probably a little like they were trying to cash in on that mad ball craze. You know mad balls. I guess you guess. I've done the Mad Ball videos twice, and they hadn't really done well, so you guys probably don't like Mad Balls, but I like Mad Balls. Who didn't like Mad Balls in the 80s? You should be sued if you didn't like Mad Balls in the 80s, but here's their take, I guess, on Mad Balls, but it has a little figure with it. Attack 
of the Killer Tomatoes. You know, the movie star and George Clooney. I think it was in the sequel. Could be wrong. Why did they make action figures based on Amazon Women on the Moon? I would have went for that one. Arsenio Hall. Oh, that's the best one right there. Remember when Ed Bakley Jr. thought he was invisible? Hmm, that was a good one. 1993. Mattel said they're going to set the world on fire because back in the 60s, kids loved David Crockett. And they said, hey, Let's bring back David Crockett. Well, they only really David Crockett, and they realized kids didn't give a crap about David Crockett in the 90s. Kids didn't even know who he was. Kids didn't wear raccoon skin hats. That's the product of the 50s and the 60s. Mattel tried to bring it back. It didn't work, so I only released one. Mattel, that's for you right there. Okay, where are we at? Oh, my God, I can't, I can't believe we're that far down the list already. Last one, and this is considered the first major movie tie-in action figure line, or toy line, Dr. Doolittle. It didn't do well, but why didn't it do well? Well, look at this. Who wants a two-headed llama? This whole thing looks horrible. Horrible. But it did kick off the movie tie-in merchandise. You have to give him credit for that. Dr. Doolittle, if you ask me, he does a lot. And yes, he does. He can make a two-headed... Llama, I couldn't think of the name of it. Oh my god, I gotta knock down some toys. Anyway, I wanna thank you for watching that. Ten Forgotten Mattel Toy Lines. Hey, Jumpman <laughs> Channel popping though. Thank you, sir, for that unsolicited testimony.